Hello and welcome to Kerbal Space Program. Today we are going to be playing career mode, except only in IVA or first person. Uh, and I've also downloaded um, Better Than Starting Manned, which changes the progression of career mode. And uh, well, I find out that it makes it a pain in the ass almost. So we only have a Stay Putnik um, pod, we have a booster, we have an antenna, and we have a thermometer. So, we have to go ahead and just launch like this. There's no way I can change this design. I can't even stick that engine on the side of itself. So that's literally the only rocket design I can do. Now I do discover that it burns up in the atmosphere. So I spam the button as fast as I can. But I discover the thermometers are actually breaking off before I reach a sufficient altitude that allows better than starting manned to um, permit me to collect science. I guess uh, that's a way you could say it. Um, so I have to try to collect the science in the small window above that height limit and also before the craft burns up. So keep spamming the button, finally transmit some data, and we only get two signs out of it. So we just have to keep doing this over and over again until we finally collect the eight signs that we're going to need to go to the next tier. So, um, basically this is a very uneventful part, so I'm speeding through it pretty fast. Um, every flight is pretty much the same, it's just learn less from it each time because we've already studied it. Um, but we end up giving all that information to our engineers, and we get ourselves some new parts. And I do have to hack myself some new money because this is very expensive. Uh, let's just pretend I'm a government program. Yeah. But we have a new science tool and these side boosters, which will hopefully slow us down and keep us from dying. Uh, but they also make it unstable. So I stick the antenna on the side, uh, which makes it so it turns off the other way. And then for some reason it comes back, and then it burns up. So it didn't work. Uh, it lasted a little bit longer. I stick some more engines on there to slow it down um, by adding more weight. But um, let's see how that goes. <laughs> All right, and we have liftoff, and uh, it crashes in the ground. So I stick that down on sideways to see if I can make the rocket spin, which would stabilize it. Uh, yeah, that that's a, didn't go too well either. Um, though I did get to collect some parts, that was a first. I did get to recover an engine. But uh, we stick these uh, big rocket engines on the side, and that doesn't end up working very well either. And at this point, I give up and hack and give myself some new science so I can go ahead and move on to a manned mission which I can throttle a liquid engine with and actually maybe do something productive. Now, this is not a pressurized cabin, so we can't take it too high. Um, we, we want to set an altitude record, but that's way above where this craft is capable of going. So we're just going to be doing a quick test of the parachute. Now I keep the throttle back a little bit, um, I want to be going fast enough that it's uh, stable, but not too fast because it will burn up. That's one of the advantages of having a throttleable engine, which is actually kind of unrealistic because in real life nobody had throttleable engines until we went to the moon. Uh, that was the, the moon lander was the first throttleable engine, believe it or not. Uh, but we're up about 100, 200 meters per second. It's kind of hard to read. I have a low res display on the playback, which I'm. This is obviously post commentary. Go ahead and throttle full up. And cut the throttle, pull the parachute before we get too high and die from um, basically explosive decompression. Or it's not pressurized, so it'd just be um, low pressure. So we're slowing down. It looks like we're going to be safe. We aren't going to hit that altitude where Jebediah will um, pass out. Um, it'd be an interesting mechanic if they just passed out, but um, they actually legitimately die. Uh, this isn't high enough to collect data, but uh, I guess we're just going to have to deal with it then. I'm going to be making an unmanned version of this, which can go to the higher altitudes because, of course, it doesn't have to worry as much about atmosphere. But we basically return on the parachute. I'll go ahead and speed that up. All right, so the parachute's deployed and we're now descending at about 16 meters per second. I am going to be throttling up just a little bit. 
uh, there just to keep it from hitting too hard. I want to cover as much of this as I can because, uh, like I said, I'm burning through money quite fast and I want to at least try. Uh, there was a bit of an explosion there. Um, let's see what we lost. And it's just the engine. Alright, um, that's just the ex most expensive part of the craft other than the capsule. Um, but yeah, who cares about that, right? <laughs> Okay, well, it's time to recover this. And, as promised, I'm going to be turning it into an unmanned craft. Um, we don't have radial parachutes, so we are kind of having doing this goofy uh, fuel tank things on the side. Um, yeah, but it works. Alright, so we go ahead and get this up to a decent altitude and start descending, pull those parachutes, and then it starts spinning wildly out of control. Finally, it opens, we get some. Uh, more stability and we are able to slow down for landing still lose the engine, but save everything else um, And I go ahead and unlock uh, Military missions which gives me this warhead and tells me go stick this on that uh, Island runway I fly this from map view. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and cons uh, Say I can use map view just not third-person view. I guess map is just zoomed out third person, but Ignore that. <laughs> anyway, um, I failed that mission uh, because the rocket kind of blew apart, and also because it was not a very well designed missile. Um, well, it was designed like a missile, I could have made it like a plane. Uh, so we stick a science version of this up, and uh, the parachutes burn off, and it also ran out of electricity, so we didn't transmit the science or recover it, so that's not too good. We'll go ahead, get some more contracts, and adjust those parachutes so they'll only open at 0.5 atmospheric pressure. Alright, we've burned out, we get our science, transmit it, um, there we go. Unfortunately we run out of power again, but luckily we've already set the parachutes to deploy, except we hit them out before we reach the proper pressure. So I stick some more batteries on it, and also plan to do some, uh, a little bit um, some changes to the parachutes, make sure that doesn't happen. We also stick more scientific instruments and these massive batteries on it, and these goo containers, and a better engine. I didn't actually unlock the better engine, I just didn't really think that I should get a better one than I was using, if that made any sense. Um, but yeah, uh, we crashed in the pad on that first flight, but this one goes up. We transmit all our beautiful data. There's one big piece that isn't transmitting. And for some reason it hits the water and blows up. I, I know there's mods that fix the deadliness of water. I might get one of those. Um, I also got a stage recovery after this, so when I go later on I actually have stages, I will be able to recover them when they hit the atmosphere. But we've now made a new man craft with a pressurized cockpit. We are going to take this up to 70,000 meters. That's escaping the atmosphere. That's Jebediah being very excited of the lift off of his new craft. He throttled back for um, once they passed 100 meters per second because, um, well, that's just guesswork, but that's the minimum speed that we, the Kerbal Scientist, has determined for the aerodynamic stability of this craft to keep it going straight. And also it keeps everything from overheating and burning up to throttle down, which is good. It also uh, improves efficiency to a point, unless you go too slow. So we're going up nice and straight, everything's going fine. 400 and 500 meters per second. We just need to make it to 70,000 meters. Our fuel is getting to the orange level. It's pretty low. And just checking our contracts there. We also are going to be testing the um, monoprop tank. Um, I, I don't know what you have to do to test it. I think you can just right click and run test. But we cut the engine 900 meters per second. And Jebediah is reporting some creaking in the spacecraft. He's not sure what it is. He's not pulling enough G's that he's expecting any structural problems. He's just going to keep going on with the flight. He doesn't really have an abort at this time. Uh, he can detach the cap.